The mega powers explode in Atlantic City, New Jersey, the site of Macho Man Randy Savage's greatest triumph when he won the WWF Championship, winning an iconic and grueling tournament, and Hulk Hogan was in his corner and then shadowing over him because, God damn it, that's what I wanted. Ha ha ha! I'm a genius. But now, Hulk Hogan, the immortal Hulk Hogan, will take on Macho Man Randy Savage, the insane Randy Savage. Can he make it to 372 days as WWF champion? And the lovely, vivacious Miss Elizabeth will be in a neutral corner. Who will walk out as champion in Trump Plaza in Atlantic City, New Jersey? Ha ha ha! Randy Savage should have walked out as champion, and I will die on this hill. I'm John Rentham with the Retroview WWE WrestleMania 5. If man, woman, animal, vegetable, or mineral are still alive, yeah, Atlantic City, New Jersey, Trump Plaza, or Boardwalk Hall, under the boardwalk. Boy, that's where Trump deserves to be, under the boardwalk. Or his supporters should be, under the boardwalk, the boardwalk. Yeah, there's going to be some stuff to be said about this particular goddamn show because if somebody was five minutes longer than WrestleMania 4, five minutes longer, WrestleMania 4 was excruciatingly, well, stretched out. And this one, you really could have cut out five of the goddamn matches, cut this down to about maybe two hours and 45 minutes. Damn sure could have cut one particular segment down. But no, that's at this point we... We, we were just full bore into the insane territory of Vince McMahon. And boy, if we only knew what he was doing behind the goddamn scenes. By the way, that's probably one of the last times you were going to hear any pseudo Vince McMahon impression. Because, yeah. <laughs> so, the capacity for this particular venue is listed on Wiki, apparently, as anywhere between 10K and 14K. And they had around 19,000 fans. I guess they hauled out the goddamn thing. Maybe they had closed circuit next door. I don't know. I do like the long entrance way, and I do appreciate, you know, the, you know, the convention or the, you know, concert hall atmosphere. I mean, that was kind of cool. The problem is, this is one of the deadest crowds for a WrestleMania. Yeah, they were up for some particular things, but they weren't a normal wrestling crowd. That's the thing. Four and five really did suffer with that. So, yeah, the mega powers explode. I think I shot my goddamn voice there. Gorilla Monsoon welcomes us. Howard Finkel introduces Rock and Robin. Tweet, 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 Rock and Robin to sing America the Beautiful. And it's a good thing she was a wrestler. She wasn't awful. She just wasn't great. Um, I did like how Ventura said she better not quit her day job. Ventura was pretty good here. Ventura also implied a few ridiculous things like Miss Elizabeth needing to get hit for not knowing her place. He might as well have said that. So, <laughs> Gorilla Monsoon, Jesse Ventura calling the action. And... Um, I, I did like how uh, Jerry Lawler's, you know, future theme played <coughs> Haku of the Ring. Yeah, played uh, King Harley Race to the Ring. And this was after, Harley Race already was gone from the company, or I think gone from the company soon after this, because he had lost the crown to Haku. And, yeah, it was King Haku. <coughs> I mean, you could just let ha Haku have the crown, because really, besides Harley Race, who the fuck is going to be able to take the crown from him? Um, the long-ass entrance was just hilarious to me. Heenan just inciting the crowd like nobody could and this wasn't the only time we saw him hercules yeah hercules against king haku you want to talk about a match that certainly opened a pay-per-view this was one of them hercules had a routine and he he was better in mid-south he was never great and by this point personal habits and other stuff had just taken hold and yeah, there wasn't really much to it. There was a lot of back focus, <clears throat> a bear hug for like a minute or two, a lot of bear hugs and chin locks and everything. So wrestling bios would be really happy with this pay-per-view. And <clears> they <throat> got the back suplex and Hercules got the victory. I guess he got his shoulder up. It looked like both their shoulders were down, but whatever. Hercules got the victory. <laughs> Not a great opener, but it was what it was. And then Shawn Michaels and Mario Gennetti are backstage with Mean Gene Okerlund. And Shawn Michaels has basically admitted that he was hungover going into the show, but drinking plenty of coffee and just taking a bunch of energy pills and whatever it was. He was all amped up and cleaned up, and then he just went out and did what he always did, and that's be insufferably good in the ring. So it was the Twin Towers with Slick. Sir, another Twin Towers team has hit Trump Plaza. 
So, they took on the Rockers. By the way, the Twin Towers were um, buildings that stood. Anyway, they were the Big Boss Man and Akeem. You know, the one-man gang that they turned into Akeem, the African Dream, and had him talk with a black accent from the deepest, darkest reaches of Africa. He wasn't making fun of Dusty Rhodes. Why would you think that? Why would Vince ever make fun of anybody that was competing against him? So, yeah, <clears throat> this was power versus speed. It was, it was certainly better than the opening match. It actually was one of the better matches on the show. Because the crowd was into it. <clears throat> there was nice double teaming by the Rockers. And then the big men took over. Bossman was so goddamn good. <clears throat> Ventura knocking the fact that it was illegal double teaming. Good point. And then a catch um, you know, off the uh, ropes. Catching Shawn Michaels, Bossman did, in a powerbomb. And then a splash by Akeem. One, two, three. And there you are. So... Shivani interviews DiBiase and Virgil. DiBiase then goes and shakes hands with Trump. You know, they're familiar. <clears throat> they're kindred spirits almost, rather, with um, having organizations that grift money off of people and they don't know how to do charity well without basically skimming money, i.e. all the money, from hardworking people. And yeah, Ted DiBiase is going to go to jail and should. The million-dollar charity skimming, scamming man. That being said... Was what it was, and Beefcake took on DiBiase with Virgil. I could dump on the fact that the hairpiece-possessing idiot um, in the front row was there, and but I've done that before in the past, and honestly, it's a 35-year-old show. You knew he was going to be there. I knew he was going to be there. So let's enjoy the wrestling, except Beefcake's wrestling. And it's hard to enjoy his wrestling because he was never very good. He was not necessarily awful, but he... You know, being friends with Hogan really helped him. <clears throat> Would he have stayed around in wrestling as long as he did? Hey, not been friends with Hogan. So, <clears throat> lots of stalling here. Ted was very smooth in the ring. Virgil distracts. We get a count out. And then a sleeper on Virgil. <clears throat> and, yeah. Beefcake. Beefcake wrestling on a pay-per-view. <clears throat> I think if I remember right, they were part of WrestleMania 2. Him and Valentine. They were part, I believe, of WrestleMania 3. That's actually where um, Beefcake ended up uh, turning and cutting Adrian Adonis' hair. Then he was at WrestleMania 6 and beat Mr. Perfect, and then he had the parasailing accent. Thankfully, he recovered. Um, he turned into a human jellyfish afterwards, but nevertheless. Let's go to Lord Alfred Hayes talking uh, to the Bushwhackers while the Bushwhackers are stuffing their faces. It's a good thing that Luke and Butch actually got the Bushwhackers gimmick because as the sheep herders, as great as they were, as violent as they were, as scary as and impressive as they were, they were broken down because they were in their early to mid-40s. The Bushwhackers gimmick gave them a new life. <clears throat> I felt like getting a new life after watching this next match, though, because it was Luke and Butch against Raymond and Jacques Rougeau. I love the Rougeau's theme. We're all American boys. We're all American boys. Jimmy Hart is out there. Raymond could still punch anybody out because he's just that goddamn tough. Luke and Butch could not move at this point, but they could get by on doing the antics and doing the thing and doing all this. And then they did the battering ram and won. And then they did this. And then they, they licked Sean Mooney, thankfully not on his Mooney or in his Mooney. Tossing the Mooney salad. What the hell is wrong with me? Do, 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 do. There you go. I did love doing that as a kid. Actually, it does give me a nice tingly feeling of nostalgia. Or maybe that's just gas or malaria. I haven't figured out which. So, um, Mr. Perfect took on the Blue Blazer. This is Owen Hart's Mania debut. <clears throat> he dazzled the crowd. He hit some impressive stuff. Because Owen was doing some good stuff in Calgary <laughs> and in Japan. And we continue to do that, especially in Japan, because Vince would have a hard time seeing that there was potential with Owen. It's a good thing that Vince always treated Owen right once he was signed with the company. It's a good thing nothing bad ever happened to him. So, good groundwork by Mr. Perfect, because he was just really, really good. And, man, Owen took some hard bumps, hit the ring. He crashed and burned from a great height, and then he would... <coughs> Just end up, you, know, you were worried he wasn't going to get up, and then he actually did get up this time. And then the perfect plex. One, two, three. It's not a bad match. It was, was what it was. This was very much an ebb and flow mania. We would have, like, an okay match. Like, Hercules and King Haku wasn't that bad. The Twin Towers would 
you know, just implode and explode all over <clears throat> the Rockers. Rockers just couldn't level them, no matter how hard they tried. And then the other seven images have been flow, have been flow. And then <clears throat> we had Howard Finkel giving Jesse Ventura all his accolades. Monsoon takes a piss out of it. We get 5K run footage where Mr. Fuji was in a suit um, running the whole thing. I mean, obviously he didn't. Maybe he did. He would have done a slight jog because he was preparing for the handicap tag title match next. And then Run DMC did a mania rap. It certainly was. And then Mooney was, you know, was just over, was just around the crowd and whatever the hell was going on. Then no one cared. No one cared what was going on with the Run DMC thing. Mooney probably was running around just thinking, what the fuck am I doing listening to this? Footage of Fuji, Fuji turning on uh, Demolition, at Survivor Series 88, and the following TV, that kind of stuff. Because Fuji was there with them when they won the tag titles at WrestleMania 4. They were going in as champions at, um, you know, by this time. And then they would face off against the Powers of Pain. So it's Axe and Smash. Here comes the Axe. Here comes the Smasher. You know, they're the, you know, metal leather militia and they're hooked on disaster. I actually don't remember what the fuck the lyrics are, even though I've heard them a lot. <laughs> Crush hadn't been introduced yet because Bill Eadie hadn't decided, I'm going home. Because Bill Eadie at that point was about 20 years into his career, or close to it. Powers Bane were warlord who could barely move, even though I'm sure he's actually a pretty nice guy. From what I've heard from people that have met him at indie shows, he's a pretty nice guy. <laughs> him and Barbarian and... Mr. Fuji. So there you go. We get the two-on-three tag title match. <clears throat> Demolition won at Mania or retained at Mania Four. Let's see. They retained at Mania Four. They retained at Mania Five, <clears throat> and they won at Mania Six. I believe that's how they were. No, they won at Mania Four, retained at Mania Five, won at Mania Six. Bottom line is they revolted three straight tag title matches at Mania, and then they took on Tenru and I believe Katow. Yeah, Katow. Yeah. If you get it, you get it. Um, <clears throat> so, it was just basically the idea is to get the powers of pain out of the way so they get their hands on Fuji. They eventually did and hit the total demolition or whatever the hell it was. <clears throat> One, two, three. Not a bad match. It was what it was. The crowd popped seeing Fuji get in the ring. I imagine Fuji taking any bumps by this point probably felt like pure hell. Because he took some rough bumps <clears throat> and was broken down by this point. But credit to him, he was still willing to do it. So, they retain the tag title. Shivani then sees Savage, and then Savage yells at him and pushes the cameraman down and likely just chews through a brick wall with how mad he was. And then <clears throat> Dino Bravo, the world's strongest man, or Canada's strongest man, and a man that would certainly not, you know, um, have his life ended number one with uh, 11 bullets. Oh, wait, he did. He did because he got involved in the mob. And yeah, that dark side of the ring was something. He took on Ronnie Garvin. Fun fact, the crowd was chanting USA. They're both French Canadians. Then again, they're in New Jersey. So there are some people in New Jersey that are smart. Most of them aren't. I can say that as knowing people from New Jersey. Do I know people that are smart or not? You decide in the comments. Yeah, side slam. One, two, three. This is not good. By the way, they also introduced renowned murderer Jimmy Snuka, who's coming back to the company. Why? Because Vince McMahon paid off the police and decided to bring Snuka back. And then Ronnie uh, stomps uh, Frenchie. I almost said Francine. That would have been weird since she wasn't in wrestling. And why, even if she was, would he stomp a woman? Also, why would Francine have been involved in WrestleMania? Nevertheless... The Brain Busters of Arn and Tully with Bobby Heenan taking on Strike Force with Santana and Martell. Of Santana and Martell, that is. Now, Rick Martell had recently returned from the company. It was a kayfabe neck injury. In reality, apparently his wife was ill. He took some time off. He was granted some leave. That was very nice of the company. I hope his wife's doing well. I actually don't know what happened to his wife. I hope she recovered from whatever it was. Um... <clears throat> And the idea was, is okay, could Strike Force get back on track? Well, they were at first, and then Tito Santana, or Chico Santana, as Ventura called him, accidentally hit Martel with the flying forearm. And God damn it, Martel's like, fuck you, I'm, I'm, I'm screwing you guys, I'm going home. The crowd boos. And then the Spike Piledriver wins it. So, 
Yeah, this is pretty noteworthy because it was a split up of strike force. <laughs> you had Rick Martel back there, another French Canadian cutting a promo. The sad thing is, is I think Martel was cutting the best promo. Not like Rick Martel, don't get me wrong. Martel at least was a pretty good promo. <clears throat> Bravo wasn't, Garvin wasn't, but at least there was some good stuff here. He was sick of carrying him around. He was riding his coattails. He's ready to do it on his own. He's going to be a model citizen after all. Era, era against. This does not look like I'm spraying arrogance. This looks really goddamn bad. Let's just keep doing it. Pump it, pump it, pump it. Loudly, pump it, loudly, pump it. Nah, nah. I don't know what I'm on about. <laughs> So, Piper's Pit with Morton Downey Jr. Fun, look up Morton Downey Jr. in controversies if you want to know why I'm glad this piece of shit died horribly. Because not only was he homophobic, not only was he racist, he was not an insult comic. He was just a horrible human being. And I'm glad that that motherfucker basically suffered horribly for all the smoking he did and all the bullshit that he did. <clears throat> I mean... Even if he was a fairly decent guy, it wouldn't have mattered. Even if he was just an insult comic, but actually a really good guy in real life. And, like, look up the stuff about Morton Downey Jr. You'll understand why I didn't shed a fucking tear about this guy. And I hope that if he had kids, they grew up to be bigger and better people than he ever was. But, it was the Piper's Pit with Morton Downey Jr. This is easily one of the worst moments in WrestleMania history. I'm just going to say, one of the worst segments, one of the worst things Vince McMahon ever put on his pay-per-view. This is taking into account <clears throat> the stuff I hated with the Jackass crew, even though some people liked it. This is taking into account Brett versus Vince, you know, at WrestleMania 26. This is taking into account Santino dressing in drag, despite the fact he hates trans people, and winning at WrestleMania 25. <clears throat> and the fact that Kelly Kelly got a, uh, you know, a pay-per-view victory at WrestleMania. Kelly fucking Kelly got that. And every other thing. And Sable also retained the Women's Championship at WrestleMania. Despite having no discernible talent for anything. Anything that was related to wrestling. Anything related. Let's just move on from that. The whole point is, this is still one of the worst things. This has to be top ten worst. This has to be. Because Morton Alley Jr. was never funny. Then Brother Love, a.k.a. Bruce Prichard, a.k.a. a guy that I honestly hope just bursts like one of those goddamn overfed you know, sprites and Metal Gear, or a Metal Slug. Maybe Metal Gear. Just hide in a box. Just send Bruce in a box over a goddamn river. Bruce Box Pritchard. Let's just move on. <clears throat> he mocks Piper, and he's wearing a kilt, even though Piper calls it a dress, because it actually isn't a kilt. It basically was a skirt there. And Morton Downey Jr., who <clears throat> was apparently a big deal. I mean, I don't know. I was... Eight when this pay-per-view came out. And even with the benefit of hindsight, I didn't see the big deal with the guy. And this was, this one, <clears throat> about 20 to 21 minutes. This was bad. Piper hadn't been seen in two years, and this was the best they had for him. Yeah, serial assaulter, by the way. Yeah, he also liked to assault women or whatever. So, yeah, hopefully, you know, what he had, that cancer he had, hopefully it just ate and ate at him, but ate slowly and painfully at him. Because that's what anybody that is like him deserves. I don't care if you're man, woman, animal, vegetable, mineral. You do that to women, <clears throat> or you do that to your partners. You do that to other people. You decide to be, you know, upset at people over their race. You decide to be homophobic towards people. You deserve the absolute worst. <clears throat> so Piper couldn't save this. This went on forever. Piper was sick of the cigarette smoke. He <clears throat> scared off Bruce Pritchard by stripping him because anybody that paid money for this would have immediately said, we paid money to watch Bruce fucking Pritchard in his briefs. That's not something to wrestle about or something to wrestle with or whatever the fuck his goddamn podcast is. Bruce Pritchard is one of the biggest skid marks on professional wrestling. Just want to say that. The pay-per-view grand to a halt or ground to a halt here and a grand to a halt. <clears throat> Downey makes gay jokes about Piper, which I'm sure Piper just goddamn... And Piper could make all kinds of jokes, but Piper also was a pretty good human being. So, he did the fire extinguisher spot. He should have, honestly, God, just hit, that, hit Downey Jr. just hard enough to where he would have been incapacitated, and then his family would have had to have looked at him and said, See, this is what happens to people that aren't good, and now you get to watch the person you love suffer... And, yeah, you're carrying his blood, so you're just as bad as him. 20 minutes of this bullshit. 20 minutes. 
This is what they brought Piper back for. Are you kidding me? <clears throat> Moody then talks to Trump. That was awkward. Proof that Trump was never good at public speaking. Talk about his bullshit Trump organization. And <clears throat> he could never talk, and his hair was always fake. Ventura then yells about the no holds barred plug that they actually cut from the, <clears throat> the feet on Peacock. And talking about how he was in great movies. Ventura was in one, or no, a couple great movies. He was in Running Man, he was in Predator. Name one other great movie that Ventura was in, in any kind of featured role. Yes, he was a guard in Batman and Robin. That's why I said good movie. Because he was in that Abraxas Guardian of the Universe, or whatever the hell it was, <clears throat> that Rift Tracks made fun of, so you know it wasn't all that good. And Ventura basically is a conspiracy nut. Hell of a goddamn commentator, great talker, and a conspiracy nut. <clears throat> so... They killed time for a bit. He did cut a hell of a promo here, I do want to say, because he was upset at Hogan. Don't blame him, the unionization thing. Video package on the Mega Powers exploding. So, <coughs> Mean Gene talks to Hogan. Well, you know what? You're exactly right, Mean Gene. Locking horns, going head on head. Okay, Hogan. Talk about yourself and Beefcake. Taking a little bit of a bump. <clears throat> he was so full of shit here, talking about how Savage was jealous. No, Hogan, you were the one that was jealous. I talked about this <clears throat> in the What If Randy Savage won at WrestleMania 5 piece, so I'm not going to go into detail there, but I will just say check that out if you want to find out a little bit of the build <clears throat> for Savage, Hogan, and some scenarios I came up with as to how Savage could have retained and what he could have done as champion. Jake the Snake Roberts was Andre, or against Andre the Giant with Bobby Heenan. Special guest referee, Big John Studd. <clears throat> Big John Studd had won the Royal Rumble just a couple of months prior and was fixing to retire. I did not mean for that to rhyme, but I do have the time. And <clears throat> this is the best they had for him. I think he died sometime in 94, 95. <clears throat> so this was painful. Because late stage Andre was hard to watch. His back was fucked. He couldn't move. Jake was never a premier worker, but he had great psychology. And later, Andre attacks John Studd, who's the referee. DiBiase attacks Jake. Jake then <clears throat> gets his snake back and opens his sack and unleashes his vicious serpent, scaring Andre. And it's a DQ and Jake wins. Jake also was taken out soon after this because he had to be taken out. <laughs> Because he had to go to jail for some crime, probably assaulting his wife or something. It was something like that around this time. Or drugs. Either or, it's really hard to tell with him. Yeah, he cleaned himself up, but he's not as bad as his dad. He just grifts people and screws people over in a different way. So anyway, <clears throat> Sherry talks about taking the title off of Rock and Robin at some point. They would uh, basically abolish the women's championship soon after this. And then talks about Miss Elizabeth. Now, she's better looking than Miss Elizabeth. I love Miss Elizabeth. She was my first crush, but Sherry was just a fucking just beauty. Absolute beauty. And <clears throat> looked great and carried herself well. Can't wait for the dark side of the ring on her. Or if it's already happened by the time you watch it, I'm sure it was great. Ding! So, our foundation of Brett and Jim the Anvil Nighthard took on Honky Tonk Man and Greg Valentine. Brett was good. This match was fine, except for Honky. He's a fucking loser. And the megaphone got utilized, but by the Hart Foundation, who used to be managed by Jimmy Hart. And Jimmy Hart and Heenan were all over the place. Slick, the Jive Soul Bro, the Jive Soul Bro, Bro, Brole, Brole, Brole. Oh no, Slick and DBZ, yeah, 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 yeah. Rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. Now, basically, it was a make phone shot that ended up getting the victory. At least Honky got pinned. Fucking idiot. Longest reigning Air Continental Champion until Gunther smashed his record, which is what he deserves. Because Gunther's an actual wrestler. <clears throat> so, Rick Rude, what a talent. And then he faced off against the Ultimate Warrior. Just want to say again, fuck the Ultimate Warrior. I'm glad he's dead. Mr. Quarian doesn't make the world work. This piece of shit. Rick Rude, Bobby Heenan. <clears throat> IC title. Rick Rude made Ultimate Warrior look like a million goddamn dollars. I'm not saying Warrior couldn't do, you know, <clears throat> a few moves, but he couldn't do them well. He could do impressive physical shit, but he would drop people constantly, injure people constantly. He was worse than Goldberg, because at least, you know what? <clears throat> They're probably about the same. Now, Go Goldberg, 
I don't know, actually, anymore. No, Goldberg, I don't actually think hates gay people. At least I hope not. Otherwise, he is just as bad as Warrior. Um, but yeah, Rick Rude did everything he could to make Warrior look great. And there was a lot of bear hugging. A lot of bear hugging here. I think a third of the match was bear hugging because Warrior was winded because he had no cardio. All he did was... Oh, cool guy. That's all he did. I don't care if there are Warrior fans out there. You can feel however the fuck you want. I will continue to say that because guess what? Guaranteed, at 43 years old, I'm more than likely older than you guys or just about as old as you guys. And I stand by my opinion. You guys can like him all you goddamn well want. I can appreciate some of the stuff that he did, but I will always maintain that he was a fucking asshole and that <clears throat> Savage should have outlived him because at least Savage did good stuff for wrestling. So anyway, we get an outside in. And Rude gets suplexed back in the ring. Hina holds the foot down. Warrior gets pinned. One, two, three. Ref doesn't see it. And then Warrior <coughs> press slams and injures Bobby Heenan. Injures him again. Not like when he broke his neck um, a bit before. And was just messy and a piece of shit because he didn't care. Talking about how Bobby Heenan's cancer, <clears throat> you know. Could eat away at him. Yeah, it's one thing for me to say that about Morton Downey Jr. Because Morton Downey Jr. was a piece of shit. Bobby Heenan wasn't a piece of shit. Bobby Heenan was more beneficial when he was out of wrestling, <clears throat> just talking about wrestling, than Warrior ever was when he was involved in wrestling. And yeah, I hope he died painfully. And I'm, it's a shame that his wife didn't go with him because his wife is just as bad as him. Hopefully his daughters grow up to be great. So, if you get that reference, I love you guys. So, yeah, then Bad News Brown, Hacksaw Jim Duggan had a match in the sense that it took place inside a ring. Bad News Brown couldn't do shit. You want to talk about a piece of shit there. Hacksaw Jim Duggan, one of the nicest guys, ends in a double DQ because it involves Duggan's wood and Bad News Brown using a chair. And Duggan wins, slamming his wood into Bad News Brown's throat. <clears throat> well, he gains the advantage and walks out victorious. Then the Red Rooster. Terry Taylor never recovered from being the Red Rooster, but considering that he was a stooge, and probably still is, yeah, he never recovered from that. Beat Bobby Heenan after Bobby Heenan did a shoulder block into the corner, <clears throat> into the post, and got pinned. And Terry was safe and made sure that Bobby was all right. Then the Brooklyn Brawler attack. This is back when the Brooklyn Brawler was not just an enhancement talent, or at least not as much of an enhancement talent. Terry Taylor ran him off as well. <laughs> Because Brawler forgot to, oh yeah, I gained the advantage, I probably should keep attacking him. Anyway, Miss Elizabeth was interviewed by Mean Jean. God, she was beautiful and just carried herself so well. Randy Savage, pomp and circumstance, comes out to the ring first. Champion coming out first, because coming out first didn't work for Hogan, brother. Hogan comes out, <clears throat> WWF Championship match. I'm not going to get into a long, detailed discussion about this particular match, because it's been done to death. <clears throat> I talked about it in videos. I really just wanted to rant about a few things and talk about the event as a whole. Savage, um, you know, his rage was un his undoing here. <clears throat> Savage should have won. Hogan can or Hogan could wrestle, rather, and proved it with a few things. He actually could wrestle Bear in Japan because <clears throat> he was allowed to go more full out. Um, Ventura was advocating for Elizabeth to get abused because it might do her some good. Okay. Ventura still sore about the whole goddamn, you know, thing at uh, SummerSlam 88? Probably. Hogan was bleeding above the eye. And basically, we got some chin locks. Wrestling Biles again, loving that. Liz keeps uh, trying to have a fair fight. Eventually, I believe it was Earl Hepner, it could have been Dave Hepner. I'm actually not sure. I think Dave still did refereeing. But one of the Hepners basically said, leave. I think it was Earl. And then we got throw targeting after the double axe handle to the guardrail. You know, Hogan's throat, getting beat down, beat down. Elbow drop, one, two, Hogan powers out. Bo, 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 bo. You, leg drop, one, two, three. Thanks for coming, Randy Savage. Thanks for carrying the company for about 371 goddamn days. It should have been about two years as champion, in my opinion, because I don't think Hogan needed to be champion to justify it. But... Not being champion didn't work for him, brother, and Savage being better than him didn't work for him, brother. Randy Savage should have walked out as champion, but nevertheless, 371 days, 
and it meant a lot more <clears throat> than any of Hogan's title reigns outside of the four-year run that he had. Like, honestly, <clears throat> I'll take Randy's reign there over anything that Hogan did after that. I'll take the one that he, you know, I'll take it over the one that he had where he dropped it to the Ultimate Warrior when he won it from Sergeant Slaughter in 91, also on and so forth. That being said, WrestleMania 5, yeah, that's the retro view because we're coming up on 35 years as the event happened. Head to head with Clash of Champions 6 in the Superdome. I may review that, I may not, it depends. Time is money, and money needs to go to bills. I don't think that's how the saying goes. Agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rethlin, I'll see you soon.